it's Terry Jeanette with Tapping Flamingo. You know, it's been about almost three years ago that a friend of mine approached me and two of other of our common friends and asked us to come to her newly formed dulcimer group. She had just started a group. We were living in Western Kentucky at the time. And, you know, I thought, well, yeah, let's go. It'll be fun to kind of listen. So we went. And we were sitting there, and pretty soon this lady comes up. She plops a dulcimer in our lap. We kind of looked at each other and was like, oh, no, we're just here to, to listen. She says, oh, no, you can play. And I told her, I said, you know, I have zero capability of doing anything musical except for dance. Grew up dancing, majored in dance in college, so I do know a little bit about that. Singing, you don't want to hear me sing. And playing any instrument, I don't read music. So, I, you know, I declined. She goes, no, these are really pretty easy. So she proceeded to show us how to play. And two hours later, after we were done, the three of us were wanting our own dulcimers. And we continued to return to the group. I have since moved back to Louisiana. And I started a dulcimer group here. And um, it's a lot of fun. Now, while I was up in Kentucky in my group, uh, one day a lady came up to me and she said I had to change out my strings, and she gave me her old strings and said, you know, I know how crafty you are. You could probably come up with something to make out of these strings. So I took them home and started playing around with them, and I made a bracelet. I do not have the bracelet anymore. I don't know what happened to it. got lost in the mood. But I do have some other things I would like to show you that I have made from guitar strings. Now, you probably wonder, where do you get guitar strings? Old guitar strings, you can just go to a music store and ask them, and they will save them for you. At least our music store is really nice about that. There's several of us that go and, and get them and make stuff out of them. So whoever gets there first gets the whole thing. And I, every time I've been, I've had a big box just full of them. This particular thing I made is a bracelet. They kind of have these little funky loop things sometimes, how, how they um, wire them to the, like I said, I'm not musical, so I, I don't know what the technical thing is, but the little thing where you tune, um, that gets like that. Sometimes I cut them off. This particular one, I kind of like the way it looks, so I left it. Um, this is made from old dulcimer strings and I just wrapped sari ribbon around, added some lace, some telephone wire. I have also made, oh, what I have on, just made a pendant, earrings to match. These particular earrings and pendant, I've actually put a crystal on and then you see that little round thing that the crystal is attached to? That's actually another uh, way that they attach guitar strings or strings to your instrument. And I, again, I don't know what they're called, but I use them. Sometimes I leave them on. Uh, this particular uh, bracelet that I'm going to show you, I actually cut it off and I've used it as a bead. Uh, I put these on necklaces. Anyway, I think they're kind of cool beads. I've also made uh, Christmas ornaments. I made some for fish extenders when we went on a Disney cruise not too long ago. I kind of Mardi Gras'd them up a little bit since we, I was coming from Louisiana. This one, I've got an owl. This is a whole a full set of guitar strings that I used on this one. And for us beach lovers, I made this one. Anyway, you know, you're, the limit you have is your imagination on what you can do with these things. Okay, so what do you need? Of course, you need old guitar strings. Like I said, you can get them uh, at music stores. Um, and you will need to clean them. You know, our hands are probably the dirtiest part of our body. So I just take the strings that I'm going to use for my project, and I boil them to kind of get all the dead skin cells and the yuck off of them. Um, so, and after you clean them then they're ready to go. You also need just regular wire. Let me tell you a little bit about wire. Uh, this particular wire is 18 gauge. I'm not using this for the project that I'm getting ready to show you. 
I just wanted to show you the difference. 18 gauge is thicker than, say, 20 gauge. With wire, the bigger the number, the smaller the wire. You can get it at, you know, your hobby store, your uh, hardware store. This came from the hobby store. They do have actual jewelry um, making wire. This is 22 gauge. Uh, sometimes they'll come in a box. I actually like this. I thought this was a nifty little box. Um, they're separated out. comes in all different colors. Today, though, um, the string that I'm using is gold, and I like to wear a lot of silver, so I'm going to be wearing, or wearing, I'm going to be making silver, or using silver wire to make my bracelet. And I'm not for sure what gauge this is. If I had to guess, I would guess it to be maybe um, 20 gauge. It's pliable enough to, that it's easy to work with, but it's not so thin that it's not going to hold up. All right, so the first thing you need to do is obtain your clean wire. And um, you need to make sure it's going to go over your hand. Now, I've kind of fashioned this particular bracelet from these. I really like this bracelet that I just bought, and I thought, you know what, I could probably make something very similar to old guitar strings. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to be kind of fashioned after it. So what you want to do is you want to take your wire, and you want to just like you're going to tie a shoe, and just tie it tight. Now, you need to measure your wrist. Everybody's is different. I actually uh, had a friend of mine um, that was saving, their family has a band and they've got all kinds of guitars and stuff and they're always changing out strings and she was always bringing me her their old strings and so I made her a bracelet well I didn't realize I've got little tiny hands she's got these are her own words manly hands and so I had to to make her another one but what you do is you just measure around your wrist or your biggest part of your hand there so it'll go over and then you tie it now if you want to drop any type of a bead onto it or a charm before you get to this point you need to go ahead and string it on okay once you get to this point you just start wrapping it you know threading it through like so and you just keep wrapping until you get to this point now if you want to use all the strings then you just you wrap the string I'm not going to but let me just show you you just start wrapping them well okay I'm going to try to show you here we go once you get started it's pretty easy you're just going to thread it through like so until you're completely done but like I said I'm only I just want a thin bracelet so I'm just going to use this all right so when you once you get to this point um you are going to need to hide these because you don't want them scratching you. So you take your wire and, your cutter, and you cut off however much you want. This is this is one of those things that as you go, you, you figure it out. You don't want to cut too much off, too little off. You would rather cut more than less off. So there's my my wire I don't know maybe eight inches okay so then you're going to start wrapping now I kind of start in the middle and I do a messy wrap I kind of like them messy and you're just gonna tuck that little booger in there like so and then you come wrapping back up once you get to this point, you're going to need to use one of your pliers to squeeze it in there and tuck it and just kind of clamp it in there because you don't want it to scratch the person's skin. Now, again, your imagination can go wild and you can go up and down or whatever. I'm just going to stay right here and just wrap these a little bit more. Just kind of go up and down until you like the look, until you've run out of your wire.
Okay, once you get to this point again, you got that little part sticking up. I kind of like to thread it somehow, just tuck it into um, that wire and so you don't feel it when you've got it on. So there is side one. Side two, do the same thing. Take as much wire as you need. More is better than less because if you got less, you don't want to necessarily have to have make possibly four ends that you need to tuck in. Okay. You continue to wrap up and down until you get it how you like it. Now, I don't like the way this looks, so I'm going to unwrap a little bit because it kind of got underneath there and rewrap. That's okay. We are human. As my sister says, we are not machines and we're going to make mistakes. Okay. Again, you got this little piece here you want to tuck under. That didn't tuck under. One thing I've noticed with working some of this stuff, I am kind of getting up in years and my eyes aren't what they used to be. There we go. And as you're wrapping, you can match this or not. I like things a little different. I, I like the unexpected. So I just kind of wrap it the way the wire goes. All right, we're almost done here. Tuck in your little end. Make sure it's not scratching you. And you're done with your bracelet. Stick it on. And there you go. By the way, I just want to show you this one bead. That is one of those little um, attachers. I don't know what they're called. I used it to um, put on one of my beads. But anyway, that's how you make a guitar string bracelet. You can use the same idea to make your ornaments and your earrings and your pendants, whatever. Um, let me know what you think. Post some of the pictures that uh, maybe you have um, of some of the projects that you have come up with with your guitar string jewelry. I would love to see them. Anyway, this is Tapping Flamingo signing out for now. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.